You guys hear about the cow that jumped over the barbed wire fence? I'll tell you, it was utter destruction. I kind of hurt just thinking about that. Um, <laughs> how can you tell the difference between an alligator and a crocodile? Okay, what's the scientific reason? Right, that's absolutely true. I think the crocodile has the more pointed snout, right? Right, right. And a bit more aggressive, too, from what I understand. So the, the way that I tell the difference between crocodiles and alligators is um, it depends on if you see one later or after a while. <laughs> Happy Friday. <laughs> okay. So, uh, oh, and of course, virtual day, too. I don't know if I'm going to do anything for that. Yeah, but yeah. keep in touch on Schoology. If I do do something, it'll be something you can complete in about five seconds. Okay, so. Maybe. I will think of that. I will think of that. So stay tuned. Check Schoology. So which of these should we try and go over in the uh, 20 minutes or so that we have? Amari, number, number seven. Let's start with number seven. So we've got Lauren Elizabeth. This this worksheet is based on my uh, eighth grade class. So that's where all the names come from. Um, <laughs> number eight, Mr. Growth, was actually our seventh grade teacher. Um, he was a pretty uh, he was a pretty tough teacher. Very very difficult. Very very strict. Uh, so that's why he found his way into number eight. But number seven, Laura and Elizabeth, they are at rest on frictionless inline skates. Elizabeth pushes off Laura so that Laura rolls away with a velocity of 10 meters per second. Question one is, what is Elizabeth's velocity? Now, when I was kind of walking around, it sounded like some people were having trouble figuring out where to start these problems. So the best place that you can start each and every one of these problems is simply like this. Original momentum equals final momentum. Even those shortcuts that we went over at the beginning of class um, yesterday or two days ago, two days ago uh, those will eventually come out of this expression. So you can always start here and know that you're starting in a good place. So let's just see that. You know, at the beginning, you would have the original momentum of Laura and the original momentum of Elizabeth. And then that'll equal the final momentum of those two individuals. Now, as the question says, they are at rest when they begin. So that goes away. And that goes away. And it looks like Laura rolls away with a positive velocity. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to have Elizabeth's momentum be the negative one. And this is one of the shortcuts. So this is just going through the process to get there if you're not comfortable starting here. So if you want to figure out the velocity that Elizabeth has, we just have to plug the numbers in. And we're given all these values except the velocity of Elizabeth. So I would divide both sides by negative m in order to isolate that v. And that's what you would have for your expression then. You just plug those numbers in to the proper momentum equation and out would come the answer, which is negative 7.14. Questions on any part of that? Okay. 
So um, the second part then has to do with impulse. What impulse does each girl experience? So we could actually have done this just right away if we wanted to, because we know <clears throat> impulse is just equal to change in momentum. So we're given the original velocity of Laura and Elizabeth. They're both starting from rest. You know, change in momentum is final momentum minus original momentum. So in terms of Laura, her mass was 50. Final velocity was um, 10. And then 50, original velocity was zero, giving us a change in momentum of 500. So that would be her impulse, because it's just equal to change in momentum. Now, can we find the impulse of Elizabeth just with this value? Of course. Otherwise, I wouldn't have gotten so excited about it. So what is the impulse of Elizabeth then? Don't think too hard. <laughs> negative, yeah, negative 500. So that's where that comes from. So again, even if you start this problem and you didn't realize, you know, I can take this shortcut that we talked about in class, you can start each and every problem here and you'll land in the right place. So feel free to just start everything like that if you want. Okay, what else should we do? All right. Is that the one with Nathan and the cart? Yeah. Okay. Nathan's a friend of mine. He recently moved back to Wisconsin from Minnesota. Um... So he is in a 50 kilogram cart moving across a frictionless floor at two meters per second. He's riding in the cart. He jumps off. So he hits the floor with a horizontal velocity of nothing. So what impulse did Nathan give to the cart? So now when we're trying to figure this out, um, you know, we don't have enough information to directly figure out what the impulse of the cart is. Because impulse, again, is just equal to change in momentum. We know the cart's mass, we know its original velocity, but we don't know the cart's final velocity. So we can't directly figure out the impulse of the cart itself. But if we can find out Nathan's impulse, we know that that answer uh, is going to be equal to the impulse of the cart, only negative. So let's go ahead and try and figure out the impulse of Nathan. So let's see here. Nathan is 60 kilograms, and he's originally moving at 2 meters per second. So the original velocity is 2. Final velocity is going to be 0, because it says he jumps out in such a way that he lands like straight down with a velocity of nothing. So because of that, we can figure out what his impulse is. 60 times 2 is 120, and the negative is there, of course. So the impulse of Nathan is negative 120. Which, therefore, means the impulse of the cart is positive 120. So the impulse of the cart then is positive 120. Questions on this procedure before we go to part B? Okay. So then uh, part B, what was the velocity of the cart after Nathan jumped? Well, because we know that the impulse of the cart is equal to 120, And because impulse is just equal to change in momentum, we can use that equation to figure out that final velocity. 
So the impulse is equal to mass of the cart, velocity of the cart, minus mass of the cart, times the original velocity of the cart. Final momentum minus original, or yeah, final momentum minus original momentum. So uh, if we want to figure out the final velocity of the cart, we can do algebra and isolate that letter. I have a feeling you probably just would rather throw the numbers in though, right? Okay, let's just do that then. So impulse of the cart is 120. Mass of the cart is 50. Time is velocity, that's what we're looking for. 50. And the original velocity of the cart was 2. So you have yourself a little algebra equation here. And if you carry this through, the velocity of the cart is going to be equal to 4.4. This was a tough one. I remember when I first made this worksheet and went through and did it myself. I had to do this one a couple of times to make sure I got it right. That was a long time ago already. All right, uh, what else should we talk about? Number eight. All right, this is the Mr. Growth example. <laughs> He's a good friend now, but boy, was he strict. And is very rarely happy. Okay, number eight. Uh, so we've got a two kilogram melon balanced on Mr. Growth's head. Ben, who was kind of the class clown, fires a 50 gram arrow at it with a velocity of 30 meters per second. The arrow goes through the melon, emerges out the other side with a velocity of 18. Find the velocity of the melon as it flies off of Mr. Growth's head. So as we go through and do this one, this is another one where we're going to have to use impulse in order to get our, our final answer here. Because what we know is we know everything there is to know about the arrow. We know its mass, we know its beginning velocity, and we know its final velocity. Therefore, we can calculate its change in momentum. And if we know its change in momentum or impulse, we can then apply that to Mr. Growth and then do the same procedure. Uh, so that's what I'm going to go ahead and do right now. But again, if you wanted to, you could start just like this. Original momentum equals final momentum. Do you want? Should we just do it this way instead of doing it the impulse way? Yeah. Okay, let's just try it this way. Forget what I said about impulse. So original momentum, and again, the reason that I... I jump to the impulse thing is because the equation is less daunting than what you're going to be set up with here. This is going to be pretty long, but it is just one equation. So let's see. Momentum of arrow plus momentum of Mr. Growth equals final momentum of arrow plus final momentum of Mr. Growth. So, or actually watermelon. That's what I should be putting in here, watermelon. Because that's what it's going through. It's not going through Mr. Growth. Okay, so uh, to just kind of draw this out a little bit more specifically then, momentum is mass times velocity. And that's our big long equation. So all we got to do is plug in all the numbers that we know, and hopefully there's just one variable that we don't know. So let's see here. Melon is two kilograms, and the arrow is 50 grams, which would come out to 0 0.05 kilograms, I think. I just want to be sure there. Yeah, 0.05. So we know both masses, and we know a couple velocities here. So original 
original velocity of the arrow is 30. Two kilogram watermelon. And then the original velocity of the watermelon is just going to be zero because it's starting off balanced at rest. Final velocity of the arrow is 18. So then this is our only thing that we don't know, the velocity of the watermelon. So if you wanted to go through and do this one, you just do some calculations here. Let's see what happens. So 30 times 0.5. So this whole side becomes 1.5. That becomes 0 0.9 plus 2 times that final velocity. So I'm going to subtract 0 0.9 from both sides. So that's 0 0.6. And then in order to get that final velocity, I'm going to divide both sides by 2. And of course, because this is our final answer, we should put units on it. And that's the same answer that we get if we did this the impulse way. But it's the exact same, uh, it's the exact same fundamental momentum law there. You start with the original momentum, set it equal to final momentum, and the numbers will shake out for you. Questions on any part of this right here? Did I lose anybody anywhere? Okay. You do it like this then? Yeah. How many people prefer this method, just starting here, and even though you have a long equation, it, uh, it's easier? Because I can see what numbers you can put in. Right. Okay. I feel like it's more confusing when you're trying to just put it equal to the actual, like, what you want to find. Mm -hmm. You can just, like, plug it in. And... Right. So just, that's just that's starting that's right here. Yeah. yeah. So how many people prefer the impulse way? Anybody? couple people. Okay. So yeah, it's a preference thing. Either way is just as good. So uh, what else should we talk about? Got a little bit of time left. Probably have time for one more good one. Otherwise, I'll just pick a good one here. We haven't done anything with uh, inelastic collisions where objects stick together. Uh, so let's take a look at that intimidating looking number three. It's kind of a long question, uh, but we'll go through that one together and then we'll, we'll call it a day here. So you got a freight yard train and it's being put together from, from freight cars here. An empty freight car coasting at 10 meters per second strikes a loaded car that is stationary, and the cars couple together, so they stick together. Each car has a mass of 3,000 kilograms when empty. The loaded car contains 12,000 kilograms of sixth graders. That's a lot of sixth graders. Uh, with what velocity does the combination of the two carts move? So in terms of this type of a problem, you can start this the exact same way, and we'll just stick with this then. Original momentum equals final momentum. So at the beginning, you've got two separate cars here. You've got the one that's 3,000 kilograms that's moving. So I'll call that the momentum three for the 3,000 kilogram car. And you've got the momentum of the uh, car of sixth graders. I'll call that 12 for the 12,000 kilograms of sixth graders there. 
And then at the end, you've got the combination of those two. So if we want to figure out the overall final velocity that this object has after the two stick together, we just got to plug those numbers into the equation. Hello. I'm just going to finish something up and then we can take over. Now because these train cars are sticking together, all you do on this side of the equation for the momentum at the end is you add both of those masses because that's all you have. You've got one single mass and the final velocity will be the combination of those two. So it's just a matter of plugging your numbers in here again. Because this is a, a pretty quick algebraic thing, I'm just going to do it that way. We can divide both sides by the sum of these two masses. And that would give you your final answer here.